Besides, in the original 1926 Science of Mind, and uh, those in foundation class have both. Because we have this big book, and I gave it to Jan, and she got all upset when she saw the size of it. But it's two <laughs> books in one. They sent me both. But in the 1926 original, it was rewritten in 1936, Holmes defines grace. He says, grace is not something God um, imposed upon us, but it is the logical result of the correct acceptance of life and a correct relationship to spirit. Where is our relationship to spirit, to God, to this loving presence? That's for each one to contemplate and to develop within themselves. Each one develops their own. To, it's the understanding which continuously unfolds and deepens and expands. It's developing that. That's why we do the classes, so that we can come together as a group and really try to understand on a deeper level and then a deeper level, and then it, so that we allow more of the grace, the love of God to flow through our lives. And that's where the freedom is. That's where the joy is. That's grace. 19th century Hindu mystic uh, Ramna Krishna, Ramakrishna, who uh, Swami Yogamananda comes, that's who, his, uh, that's who he follows, that Hindu tradition of Ramakrishna. And he wrote this a little more poetically. He said, the winds of grace are blowing all of the time. All we have to do is raise our sails. So you experience God's most amazing grace, my friends, the instant you open yourself up to it. So again, it's our responsibility. And you know, it's not my responsibility to open someone else's consciousness up to receive the grace of God. It's not my responsibility to perceive joy for another person. It's always going to come back to us taking the responsibility, opening our minds, our hearts, our very souls, our beings, our essence to that indwelling grace of God, that love of God. It's always giving. It's always giving. And it doesn't say, okay, it's good for you. No, you're not good. No, we don't do that. We know that this God gives is, gives this love unconditionally to all our life. No one is left out. It's just you have to receive it. But having said that, there's more. In what is known as a spiritual paradox, we all love paradoxes. Life is a paradox, is it not? Truly? We talk about God's love and God's grace and joy and then we go, you know, we walk out and get slammed in the head like with a two by four by an experience that catches us off guard. So it's kind of like a paradox. But even if you don't really realize it, even if you don't connect with God's love, even if you don't believe it, it's at work anyway. It's always present, it's always there, it's creating, it's expanding, it's always creating more life. That is the nature of God. So therefore that, us, as a microcosm of that great I am, that's our joy to do. We create. We create our experiences. We do. We create our experiences. We're powerful. We're so powerful. We keep reading that, but I'm telling you, it's the truth. We are powerful. And beloved Unity Minister and author, Eric Butterworth, mm. remember him from New York City? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wrote this amazing quote. Grace is that which works beyond and in addition to law. Mm. It doesn't break law. Rather, it fulfills it in terms of sustaining us in spite of ourselves. Isn't it a wonderful thing to know that even if we do frustrate the flow of life in us, the love of God is so great and the divine desire or creative will so intense in us that it will always transcend even our own limited thoughts. Is it true, he writes, that as a man thinketh, so is he, and as ye sow, so shall ye reap. Yet God's desire in you 
to express perfectly through you and as you is so great. I love this part. This really, this is going to make you feel good. It is. It's going to let you like the hook. <laughs> yeah, the hook. It's so great in you, right? God's love is so great, Butterworth writes, that you never completely reap the harvest of error. And you always reap more than you sow of good. This, quite simply, is grace. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah, it lets us, makes us feel a little, ah, God's got my back. Love that. Something of the infinite is always filtering through and becoming a part of our consciousness. It's always filtering through. Whether we know it or not, the more we open to it, the more we receive. That's the way it works. And it's much like being in a house where the windows are closed and the door is shut. You're still going to have enough oxygen to breathe. It's still going to filter through. But you know what happens when you open the door and you open the windows? It all flows right through to you. You receive more. You receive more of the, the air, the, the oxygen. So it's the same thing with our consciousness. The more we open up to it, our awareness, the more grace, the more love, the more good that we then experience. And the, the quote that I really love by um, Joel Goldsmith, Thy grace is my sufficiency in all things. I, uh, everyone's been here. Anyone that's been near me this week? <laughs> Bob, do you know it by heart yet? <laughs> Thy grace is my sufficiency. What a great affirmation. And that is in the beginning of his book. And if I got nothing else out of the book, that was enough to really feed my soul. That's my new affirmation. Every time something pops up, I go, breath and say, thy grace is my sufficiency. The grace of God is all I need. It's all I need. But of course when we work in harmony with that grace, is, that is always working anyway in our lives, by turning to it, accepting it, believing it, and its power then is exponentially increased. It's even more powerful. It's a vibrational force of such power that it can lift you in an instant out of your immediate circumstance and fill you, fill you with the belief that there is nothing that you cannot do, that you cannot create, that you are so powerful beyond all measure, powerful. And no matter what circumstance, what that looks like a disaster that is taking place in our life, thy grace is my sufficiency, okay? The grace of God is always present, always. And so, my dear friends, you are one of God's greatest treasures. Each and every one of us is a treasure of God because we've been created out of the likeness, the nature of God itself. So each one is a treasure. And the most amazing grace covers you, blankets you with its love. And so in this moment, as you open up to that grace, as you allow it, as you truly believe that there is something else that exists other than just your human experience, that there is a power of good that created each and every one of us, that grace, that love of God, which is amazing, which is amazing, will fill your every experience, your every thought. And so, we just breathe that in, and Norman is going to finish out the talk. <laughs>
blessed a soul like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I Yeah.